In this video, I'll show you how to install ICE 2.4 on VMware vCenter 6.5 from an ISO. You will need to have the ISO downloaded to your PC before continuing. In vCenter, select the data store that houses the installation media. If you can, choose the same data store to which you install ICE. Click the Browse Files button, then once the file browser comes up, select the icon for uploading the file. Choose the ISO file for ICE 2.4 and click OK. Once it is uploaded to the data store, you will see it in the file menu. Click the back button to get to the host view. Once you're in host view, you can right click the host onto which you install ICE. Select new virtual machine and new virtual machine again. Click next on the first screen. On this screen, Give your virtual machine a name that is meaningful to you, given the naming conventions of your organization. Once you have a name, go ahead and click the Next button. Select the destination host on this screen and click Next. Then select the data store to use and click Next. Choose the VM hardware compatibility and click Next. For the guest OS family, choose Linux and then choose Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7 64-bit and click Next. Now we're going to provision hardware resources. I chose four CPUs and I allocated 16 gigabytes of memory to the virtual machine. The hard disk size was set at 250 gigabytes. Then I chose the network to use for the VM as you can see, I almost forgot to set my data store ISO as my virtual DVD. So choose data store ISO from the file, select your data store, and then choose the ISO file and click OK. Remember to select the boxes to connect the devices. Remember to set the hardware reservations. For the CPU, I'm going to set it at 20 gigahertz. For the memory, I'm going to select the box that allows me to reserve all the allocated memory for this VM and then click Next. Review the settings in this screen and click Finish. In the Recent Tasks menu, you'll see Create Virtual Machine as the task. Once that is completed, I can begin to power up the virtual machine. To do this, you right click on the, the new VM and from the right click menu, choose Open Console. A new window will appear and I'll maximize that window. Power on the VM by pressing the play button on the top menu. At the ICE installation menu, choose Option 1 and press Enter. This will begin the installation routine for ICE. Now, I have sped this up as this routine normally takes about an hour to go through. So there is no need in making you sit through all of that. You can see the screen as it goes through and hopefully the screen that you get looks similar to this. Once you get to the localhost login, type setup to go through the first initial setup script. Give your ICE virtual machine a host name. I chose to name mine ICE24. Put in the IP address that you've allocated for your ICE. Enter in the subnet mask. Default gateway. Now you can enter in your default DNS domain. And the primary name server IP address. If you have more than one DNS server, you can enter additional in by pressing Y here, and then do the same thing for your NTP servers. Choose a time zone, and then I always enable SSH. Press enter here to accept the default admin as the username, then enter in a password that you can remember. Now 
I've also sped this process up as this takes quite a while, another 20 minutes or so for this to finish. Once this does finish, you'll come up with the local login here, and you log in with the admin account that we just created in the last step. Run the command show application status ICE to see all the processes that ICE needs to be running. As you can see, we have running, not running, and disabled in this list. When typing commands into ICLI, you can use the shortened versions. I typically try to stay with three characters per command. And as you see, you can also use the up and down arrow keys to scroll through your history of commands. What we're looking for is for the application server process to be in a state of running. Once it's in that state, we'll be able to access ICE through the web GUI. Now that it's in the running state, we can minimize this window, open up the web GUI, and point our browser to the IP address of the ICE we've just created. We'll get a certificate warning since we're just using a self-science certificate right now, and we can log into ICE. Once you're logged in, the dashboard will come up. It'll ask you about some telemetry features and if you want to start a couple wizards to get your configuration going. And congratulations, you've now installed ICE.